All right, back with the third video, just going through our practice exam. So the graph of the inequality 3x minus 2y is less than 6 is given by one of these. Well, first of all, it's a less than equation, so we can rule out two of them straight away, can't we? We can rule out the solid lines, because solid lines are for greater than or equal to or less than or equal to questions, so that's no good. Which one matches up correctly? If 3 uh, 3x minus 2y, I might just zoom in here, I'm not sure how the view is going to be for you guys watching on video so let's try and give you a better chance here that might be a little bit easier on paper it actually comes out fine i'm pretty sure uh, if i wanted to rearrange this i would have 3x is less than 6 plus 2y i could have 3x minus 6 is less than 2y 3x minus 6 divided by 2 is less than y why did i do that well i can see now i've got a positive gradient of one and a half and a y-intercept, negative 6 divided by 2 would be negative 3. So you can find which one it is that way. Did they shade the right side? Well, if I substitute in, remember the easiest point to substitute in is 0, 0. Is 0 minus 0, that's still 0. Is that less than 6? Yes, it is. We know A is going to be the answer. You could have actually just substituted incorrectly straight away, but I wanted to remind you of that gradient-intercept form anyway, didn't I? What's the value of x in the diagram on the right? So here you need to know that it's the distance from the point to each of the other points. So here we have PA multiplied by PB, and that would be the same as PC multiplied by PD. So what have I got? I've got 6 multiplied by 6 plus X, and that's going to equal 7 multiplied by 7 plus 5. And it's just a bit of maths now, isn't it? 36 plus 6X equals 712s are 84, subtracting 36 from 84, and I will have 6x is equal to uh, 48. Therefore, x must equal 8. Answer C. Let's just check it. If x is 8, I would have 6 for PA, and 14, 6, 14, 60 plus 24, 84, and 7 by 12 is 84. So there you have it. That's the number we were looking for. Root 108 in its most simplified form. Remember, you are looking for the highest perfect square that's a factor of 108. You may or may not find the highest one. Let's have a look how you could do it. Let's just say, look, you know 4 goes into 8. You're not great at these, but you just play it. Safe, I know 4 goes into that, you know it goes 25 times into 100, so that's 4, root 4 by root 27. Well, that's okay, we can simplify that to 2. Now, root 27, well, that's got 9 in it, doesn't it? And it will be 9 times 3. So I could write it as root 9 times root 3, and again, the root 9 this time is going to simplify, so I'd have 2 times the square root of 9 is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6, root 3. Can you do that? Any faster? Yes, of course you can. Root 108 is root 36 multiplied by root 3, and you could get straight to the answer that way, couldn't you? Root 36 is 6, so it would be 6 root 3. Two to go, and we've finished the multi-choice questions. 7c to the power of 0. Remember, this is 7 multiplied by c to the power of 0, so that's 7 times 1, or 7. If you were getting sucked in and writing the 1, that would be if I had 7c all to the power of 0, that would equal 1. 7 multiplied by c to the power of 0 is 7 times 1, or just 7, as we've already said. Lucky last, 3g to the power of 2 thirds expressed with a radical sign. Well, the 3 doesn't change, g to the 2 thirds, so it is the cube root. The number in the denominator is what root we're taking. 3 times the cube root of g squared, and we should see 3 cube root of g squared. That is answer A. All right, that's it for now. Catch you in the next video. Bye.